there's still a lot we don't know about the coronavirus this morning. And information is changing rapidly as health experts work to understand it better. So at 6.33 to help us navigate what we do know about COVID-19, we're joined this morning by Dr. Natia Safdar, Medical Director of Infection Control at UW Health. Dr. Safdar, thank you, first of all, for your work and for being with us this morning. Uh, let me thank jump you. right in and start with this. What exactly happened here? We made it through uh, summer. We didn't have a mask mandate in place. There weren't stay at home orders. Active cases had dropped below 8,000. They're now over 30. Hospitalizations in early September were below 300. We're now pushing 1,000. What happened? It's like we flipped a switch. You know, I think it may seem like we flipped a switch, but really the insidious spread of the virus, I think, was here for many months. It just got to a tipping point where it started to diffuse into the population, and we started to see the lagging indicators of that spread in the form of hospitalizations and deaths, which is what we're unfortunately seeing now. Dr. Safter, I'm curious because I still hear people saying this is just like the flu. Those who are, are critical of the coronavirus and the mask mandate will say this is just like the flu. We are in flu season. Um, I did look up the number uh, 183 flu deaths, according to the state health department last year. In your opinion, is the coronavirus like the flu? It is not like the flu. The mortality from COVID-19 is several times higher than the flu. And I think, you know, we know a lot more about the flu than we do about COVID-19. It's a pandemic that is still extremely unpredictable because there are still so many unknowns. We also don't know a lot about the long-term consequences of this pandemic, which we do know about the flu. And so what we're learning is even if people recover, many of them will have lingering symptoms that prevents their full return to work and life for several months after their initial illness. Uh, Dr. Softer, Susan mentioned the, the mask mandate. You know, without regard for the politics of whether it should be mandated or who has the authority to do that, let me ask you your medical opinion as a doctor. Does the wearing of masks in public reduce the spread of COVID-19? Yes, you know, to put it shortly, um, the, there's a whole suite of solutions, you know, that will prevent a transmission of this virus and masking is one of them. It's not a substitute for all the other things we need to do, like limiting our physical movement, like social distancing when we're together, by limiting the, the frequency and the size of social gatherings. But masking is a critical part of that. Um, you know, I've said before, there, there isn't a silver bullet for COVID-19, so we have to use whatever we can, whatever works, for as long and as faithfully as we must to get this under control. You know, there's been so much concern, Dr. Safter, for uh, businesses, restaurants, uh, and bars in particular have talked about uh, the impact on business with limiting the number of people that can be inside. Uh, we're limiting indoors capacity now to 25%. In your opinion, how much can that help? Does it even help uh, the spread of the coronavirus? The social distancing and the limiting of crowding of people in closed spaces is one of the most critical ways to reduce COVID-19. You know, it's not something that I think anyone wants to hear because, of course, it has an impact on businesses. But the truth is you can't really fully open any business or any place until we have this pandemic under control. Because what will happen is you open and then you have to close down again and you might see a super spreader event. And, and that's the last thing any business wants. Dr. Natia Safdar of UW Health, thanks so much for your time and for your work uh, this morning. You and your colleagues stay safe there as well.